This is More Than 5%, a podcast dedicated to covering the stories of women in sports. Whatever the sport, whatever the role, everyone is welcome. Now, let's join our hosts, Zoe Hicks and Carly Jackson, for a weekly conversation with women who inspire. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to More Than 5%. I am Zoe Hicks, your co-host, a former Division I softball player, current employee at the Los Angeles Dodgers, as well as current member of the women's national baseball team. Hey, y'all. This is Carly C.J. Jackson, Tough Mustard. Call me all of the above, any of those things. Uh, professional hockey player for the Toronto Six. I'm a goalie, so I'm a little bit weird. Uh, I love talking video games, sports, guitar, all kinds of stuff, but I uh, just love doing this show and uh, love highlighting amazing people. Speaking of amazing people, we have Claire Eccles, and we got a bit a bit of a lengthy bio here, so stick with me. Uh, let's start off with, um, she has been a member of the Canadian women's national baseball team since 2014, which is kind of insane if you're thinking about that. That's a long time to be part of a national team. It's now 2023, so just take a second to appreciate that. She's also played in the 2015 Pan Am Games in Toronto. She is a silver medal World Cup winner uh, in 2016 in South Korea. In 2018, she won a bronze medal at the World Cup in Florida. She's competed in the pre-worlds in Mexico in 2019 the, and the 2022 Friendship Series in Thunder Bay. That's a lot of appearances. That's just nuts. Blows my mind a little bit. And going to the next piece here, I actually remember this as a fan. I remember being so hyped about this. In 2017, she signed with the Victoria Harbor Cats, the first woman to play in the West Coast Baseball League. She also played softball at UBC from 2016 to 2019. She's a current member of Canada Soccer, working as the equipment and tour manager. That's a long bio. That's a lot of stories. That's a lot of experience. Just incredible. Claire Eccles, welcome to the show. We're so happy to have you on. Thank you for having me. Um, so I met Claire this summer. Um, it was my first time on the national team. Uh, Claire's ninth time on the national team. You know, as her being the vet, me being one of the rookies, uh, got to know her a little bit, wanted her to come on the pod to talk about her experience. Um, we're going to start this episode like we start every episode with a little bit of good shit. My good shit. I'm back in Phoenix. The weather is starting to get a little bit warmer. So starting to get baseball season, get some good feels around here. Guys are showing up for spring training, so excited about that. Uh, my good shit is I had I had great a great dinner with my billet family last night. Um, we just had dinner. We watched a bit of the Leafs and Bruins game. It was just it was good. It was good shit. I'm also going to be in the states soon. I'm in my first camp is coming up with Canada Soccer, so I'm going down to Florida on Monday next week. And I got to walk my dogs today, which was nice. Nice little break from work and everything. So. That's kind of just what's going on. What are your dogs' names? Uh, so I have Huckleberry, and he's our older one. And then Georgia is the younger one. Aww. Those yeah. are so cute. Do you yeah, have a favorite? Uh, no. I would say they're both high maintenance in different ways. Relatable. And chill in different ways as well. Okay. Nice. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. So that's big news. Canada soccer, big time. We will get into that later in the show. I want to start. I want to start kind of selfishly. Like I know you from the national team playing women's baseball. You've been on the national team for nine years. Um, we've said that a couple times already in this episode. Nine years. I'm gonna say nine it one years. more time. N I N E. Nine years. Like that to play a sport at that high of a level for that long of a time is insane. Wow. Like pat yourself on the back. Now we want to hear about it. We want to hear about all the stories. So can you kind of talk about what it means to you to be on the national team for that long and the world events that you've competed at, if you have like a special memory or a story to talk about, kind of just go for it. Sure. Um, I mean, I think it's weird to also think that I've been on the team for nine years. I think the other part of it is now that all the older players have retired. I'm like one of the older people, but coming on it when I was 16 for my first World Cup, I still think I'm like one of the young ones but I realize now that there are now 16 year olds on the team and I'm one of the older ones so I feel like time's kind of just flown by to be honest when I first made the team I didn't even know that that was like a possibility like when I made the team in 2014 I was that was my first like senior team national camp 
um, or tournament. And uh, at the time, like I had only known that there was a Team Canada for women like a year before. And I remember I had like a really good tournament. And at that time, you would like stand kind of on the field. We had played in the bronze medal game. So we were all, all on the field. There was like Ontario and Alberta also on the field because they had played in the gold medal game. And what they used to do was they would like announce that you made the team right then and there at the field. So I'm like, <laughs> I'm next to Nikki Boyd, who is uh, the starting center fielder for Canada at the time because she was playing Team BC and she's just like, oh, you're ready to go to Japan that's where the world cup was and i kind of looked at her and i'm like i have a chance like i didn't even really know that that was a possibility anyways it had gone down they were calling all the like more experienced players first and then all of a sudden my name is called and it just got like super real went home realized i had to like pack up because i was going to meet the team the next day we had a few days in bc because that's where the nationals were and that's where i live and then got on a plane to japan yeah, I mean, that was cool. It was my first time in Japan ever. I'm half Japanese, so that was a cool experience. And um, that's that's probably one of my favorite memories, too, is just going to Japan. And then, obviously, I feel like I've been a world traveler because of it. So, I mean, there's a lot of stories. I should also mention that the very first time I was on, like, the senior Team BC team, Amanda Ace was catching, and I was like first time meeting her she'd just shown up because she was living out of town and uh we were practicing like pickoffs and stuff and just i was on third base base running she was catching and she was super intimidating to me anyways took a bit of a too big of a lead and uh she tried to pick me off and it hit me square in the back and the shoulder and i had the biggest bruise on my back the entire tournament but anyways, so that was one of my first times meeting Amanda and then first times like being on the senior team with BC. For those of you outside of the baseball world, I do want to take a second to explain who Amanda Ace is. Uh, Amanda Ace is the longest serving Canadian women's national team player starting in 2005, serving for 16 years and helped Canada win a silver medal at the 2015 Pan Am Games in Toronto. She also has helped the national team win World Cup medals in 2006, 2008, 2012, 2016, and 2018. Ashley Stevenson, longtime teammate and coach of ASA, said that Amanda was a one-of-a-kind teammate, the type of player and person who you love to compete with every single game. Amanda tragically passed away in January of 2022. So anyways, that's kind of just where it started, and it's been a good time ever since. Question for you. Nine years later, is there anything that you might say to yourself, to that younger version of yourself in that moment where you're kind of like, oh, maybe I do have a chance. And then actually hearing your name called and having that moment, is there any piece of advice you would you would give to yourself at that age? Or would you just kind of let the pieces fall as they may and as they have? Um, but what what is your opinion on that? I think like knowing now, I would have been like, make sure that you really enjoy every moment. I think I did, but I think right now in the position that I'm at with work and like, what's coming up in the future with ball like I would just yeah say enjoy all the times all the trips all the teammates that you've gotten the chance to play with because I feel like so much happens and just life happens and it just kind of I would never change anything but I definitely love love the experience and wouldn't yeah would never take it for granted would never want to have taken it for granted yeah, um, you, you've played for a long time and you've played at a high level for a very long time. And that's tough. Like when you break it down to the training, the preparation, the sacrifice, the time, all of that commitment, what do you believe pushes you to continue playing? Like what is that thing that drives you to say, you know what, well, I'm not done. Like I'm going to give it another go and another, another go and another go for, you know, as long as you can. Yeah, I think like if I think of like Ashley Stevenson, Kate Soda, players who played on the national team for a really long time I'm like I also want that to be me but I know what it requires a ton of work I mean it is a huge commitment to not really have a ton of funding with Baseball Canada and just being a woman athlete in general it makes it harder you know it takes time out of your day when we have full-time jobs and everything like that but I would say it's just like the pure enjoyment of the game you know like it kind of just makes you feel like a kid again when you get to like hang out with some of your best friends and teammates for 
a week, two weeks, and just eat, sleep, and breathe baseball. Um, and I kind of always, like, forget that until the moment when it's like, wow, this is amazing that we get this chance to do this. Um, so I would just say, yeah, it's the enjoyment of the game and the people that I'm surrounded by when I'm playing it. So, Absolutely. The community, the baseball community. And you've mentioned it, like, you grew up in BC, you're from BC, um, you played – for Team BC as well. Um, kind of talk about that community and how they have helped you to push you farther in baseball and kind of push your accomplishments further as well. Yeah, I mean, I think the BC girls, they're they're great. Um, they're very involved. It makes me feel like I also want to be more involved, just their level of commitment. I Yeah, again, I would say I didn't know that. There was a whole world of women's baseball that existed. Um, so, like, when I was 12, one of my very few female teammates at the time, back in my, like, little league community, said that this Team BC existed and we should go try out. And, I mean, I think it's a huge, as much as I love playing with guys, I think it's, like, a ton of fun to also play with a bunch of girls who are just also unreal at baseball. Um, and I think, yeah. It's just, it's just, it's, I think for me, it's just like enjoying time. I think that's really all it is. Um, and yeah, I think it's cool because when I was younger, there wasn't as many girls involved in baseball. And now you see like the rise in numbers and all the young talent coming up. So I think not just Team BC, like the younger players and the current older players, but just knowing that there is so much talent coming up definitely pushes me harder to still be good enough to compete with them so yeah for sure I remember my first year 2018 I think we had six teams maybe and then this past year 2020 we had two Ontario teams two Quebec teams like there were literally like two pools because we had so many teams like just to see the growth in that small amount of time like I've only been around for four years I can only imagine from your point of view of like growing with the game and seeing everything kind of like grow around you as well has just been insane to like watch it happen in real time. You know, like I, I can't even imagine that. Yeah. I mean like not only that, but just like even seeing all the success that people are having at a higher level, Olivia Pichardo, if I'm getting that last name, right? Like even her Div 1 Brown, all these people getting opportunities to play ball at a higher level, whether that be, well, mainly with guys or what have you, but it's just cool to see that people are still getting all these opportunities and more and more are getting opportunities like that. So becoming a norm, right? Like yeah. you were the first to play with the Harbor Cats, right? And since then it's been, it feels like every year there's been another one or two or three or four and it's becoming more normal. And all these stories are like, just so fun to follow um, yeah yeah it's 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 exciting to see too where it's going to go in the next few years like what's the next you know first first yeah absolutely have you guys seen um the diamondbacks manager uh ronnie gishonik i'm probably saying that wrong there's so many letters in that last name i could not be saying it right and they interviewed her yesterday for national girls and women in sports day and that's exactly what she like she echoed that exact statement of like i'm just waiting for it to be normal for mm -hmm. someone to be hired put into a role that they're very qualified for that they're going to do a really good job at that they have the experience for just because they're a woman like I'm waiting for it to be not special like yes I'm excited to be on tv and do all these interviews and push the limits of this but I'm waiting for the day that someone gets a job and no one bats an eye like that's yeah. what we're pushing for is the not the special case but oh great move on there's that mixture of double-edged sword of like okay we want to be excited but at the same time we want it to be so normal that nobody notices so it's like where when do we get to that spot I think it's coming I think it's we have to get through all the firsts obviously of course of like breaking down the walls and the barriers and like having people in those positions but once you get one then you know two three four and then it's just people who are qualified people whoever they are whatever they look like I think that's the biggest thing I'm excited about is like you know I'm working in baseball at 25 um, seeing all these firsts, like what happens when I'm 45, 55, like how many women, how many elite level baseball minded women are going to be around me when I'm, you know, 55, 65, still working, still pencil pushing in baseball. You know what I mean? Like, that's what I'm excited for. 
Um, so being a part of Baseball Canada for so long and now working in Canada soccer, um, what has helped you while working in an elite program like that for your current position? I mean, I think just being on the other end, being a player and kind of just knowing how it works. I think one thing that I've found to be quite crazy about my role is just recognizing how much work goes behind like organizing and orchestrating all this stuff like you know as a player you kind of just show up everything's there for you you're in your hotel like you bring your bag stuff's provided for you you go and get food at the like dining hall or whatever it may be but like the amount of planning that goes behind it and I think like Canada soccer right now is just on a whole different scale like it's my full-time job Mm -hmm. we don't have that with baseball Canada um but you know meetings and all that stuff to plan you know we're all already thinking ahead to the world cup which is in august and um yeah i think i can just like relate to the players maybe not to the extent that they like are in right now but i think just like being involved in sport and high level sport for so long i just i feel like i just kind of you just kind of get it like there's not much to explain other than like everything just makes sense and you know just even interacting with the players you know like if I'm not gonna I'm sure there's some times where I shouldn't talk to them like just depending on like what mood they're in or kind of zone that they're in it's just fun to be around sports like 24 7 and even when we're away at camp just showing up and getting paid to be working at their training and at their games and all that stuff. So it's just, it's fun to be involved in sport. It's unfortunate it's not baseball, but I grew up also watching soccer. I love soccer. I'm I'm lucky to be in the role that I am. So what is, can you like walk us through like an ideal day or maybe one of your favorite work days working for, for Soccer Canada? Well, yeah, I mean, it's, it's different whether I'm in camp or not. Like, so when I'm out of camp, I'm working from home or working from the warehouse. I like oversee kind of all the women's programs. So that's the senior, U20, U17, U15, and they all go away on trips. So I'm the person that kind of packs up all this stuff and sends it off. And that's like med physio stuff, sports science stuff, like field gear, all the clothes. And I have someone helping me with like jerseys and all that stuff. But um, so that's kind of day-to-day off-camp stuff but when I travel with the senior team it's like you get in you're doing laundry or you're like just kind of there for anyone who needs I kind of bring all the equipment in and then we go to training I set up for training set up the locker room which is always fun and then I'm on the sidelines in the game I would say like probably my favorite is game day it's stressful but it's always kind of fun to just sit back and watch everyone play but it's I feel like it's very different depending on yeah camp in it or out of it it's it's so good for people to hear like what it's what the routine is like like what is it like working in sports especially people who aspire to that so love hearing the details of of what you do and too in your job with soccer Canada I mean that's pretty sweet and I also think it's it's such a valuable thing for you as a person who can appreciate the amount of commitment and like that high level of athletics I think that that probably provides a really stable, calming energy for your athletes that you work with. And like you said, you just get it, right? And that's that's experience and that's compete in an athlete's mindset. And I just think that that's awesome. You must be a really valuable asset to the organization. So it's really cool to see you. You know, I've seen you play as an athlete and, you know, I've been I've been blown away by some of your pitches and I've seen you compete and your success over the years. So to be able to see you bring that to another sport as well. I mean, it's it's a win-win. It's a double whammy, and it's it's really fun to see. And I'm definitely excited to hear about it and to spread your story and your experiences through through this platform. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate it. Of course. All <laughs> right, next question. So, you mentioned you're a competitor. You're a great athlete. Tell me about what you believe made you successful. Um, it's not easy to do what you do. You've just wowed us with your accomplishments so far. Um, but what what is it about you, about Claire Eccles, that has got you to this point in your life? I mean, I think one thing I would say that has been really helpful for me is growing up. Being a multi-sport athlete, I would say, like, it's made me just a better athlete in general. 
I think it's also like it hasn't made me burn out just playing one sport. But, you know, I grew up yeah, playing soccer, basketball, baseball, softball. I think all that together just made me be like a better teammate, better athlete in general, just being around in that environment all the time. And I think probably another thing that's made me successful, I wouldn't say it would necessarily work for everyone, is just like my calmness and kind of like my silent competitiveness. Because mm -hmm. I feel like, I, don't, I, I mean, Zoe, you, you, you've seen me, I'm like not the most talkative and chatty person there on the field or off the field. <laughs> You're just like silently like doing your thing very well it's very authentic to like this is how this is how you work this is how you do things yeah i mean I, and like, like compared to you like you're you were first year with the national team last <laughs> year and you're way more talkative than i am but and i think sometimes like i can sometimes think of that as a weakness with me like just being so quiet but i think i kind of just watch and observe and i think i like step in when i need to for the most part i kind of just try and like lead like quietly and calmly and more with my being I guess than shouting all these words and I think it can be helpful for other people maybe not always but no absolutely um, absolutely I think like you need both people if you had yeah. if we had all everyone was the same and we were all silent and like it'd be it'd be different like and then on the other flip side like if you had everyone who was screaming and jumping and like cheering all the time you'd lose your mind like you have to have that mix of people and I think that's why I love sports so much it's just like it brings a mix of people in, you know, people, there's so many different people that can be good at baseball. There's so many different people that can be good at hockey. They can be different personalities, but like have a skill set. So yeah, I totally think that's useful. I 100% know that there are people on the team that look to you and say, okay, Claire's calm. I'm calm. We're good. We're good. Right. My nerves go away. Like they look to you as a veteran who knows what she's doing. Like, oh, cool. Yeah. This is what we're doing. We're chill. We're vibing. We're fine. And then there are other people that are like, okay, I'm freaking out. Like, I need someone to just take my mind off it. And I'm screaming, jumping, dancing around. Like, both those people help a team dynamic-wise. Be in your authentic self. Most powerful thing, man. Absolutely. <laughs> Show up as you. What are you like on in on the rink? Uh, I, I feel like I'm a pretty chill guy. I... I like to have a good time. I feel like on the baseball field, I'm a bit kind of nuts. <laughs> but at the hockey rink, I'm very, like, relaxed, chill. And maybe that's just because of the position. Like, being a goalie, yeah. you're kind of you're in an isolated spot, so you're just kind of vibing. But, yeah, I would definitely say I'm, I'm way more chill at the rink than on the baseball field. I feel like a lunatic when I'm at the baseball field. But <laughs> different sports bring out different parts of your personality, right? Yeah. Yeah, fair enough. Absolutely. All right. So... Is there anything, Claire, that you would like to say or a message you would like to give to your fans, to the listeners of the show, uh, before we get into kind of some silly, fun questions? I think it's just an important platform that you two are providing. I think I appreciate you having me on here. And I mean, I actually, I listened, I've listened, I actually listened to Katie Reyes back when she posted it, but I re-listened to it today just to get a better idea of what you two do. I think it's really cool that you just are able to provide a platform to just have conversations about women in sport and all that stuff. So keep it up. Thank you. That's so nice. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Okay, now so, for the funny stuff. Put her on the hot seat. Yeah, we Put got the hot, hot seat. seat. These are just simple, silly questions just to get your brain a little fired up. They're different from the episode that Katie was on. So I'll start you off. So this is just kind of a rapid fire, just meant to twist your brain a little bit. So First question, a bit of a warm up. Is a hot dog a sandwich? Yes or no, and why? Mm, I would say no, because I feel like, I don't know, I feel like that's just the way it should be. It's not a sandwich. But I would say that I find that the bun is just one piece, unless it breaks off into two, I guess. But I would say no. I don't really have a reason why. I just think it's the way it should be. Uh, that's good enough for me. That was actually a test and you passed. Um, so on to question number two. If you put one lasagna on top of another lasagna, is it two separate lasagnas or is it just one big one? <laughs> I'm going to say it's one big one. I feel like because it's just a larger layered lasagna. And I'm sure that there's some restaurants who maybe do that or really stack it up, where they just have a really large pan that can make more layers than the normal lasagna. Right. Like, is there a certain number that makes I, something a lasagna? I'm no chef, but the more layers, the better. Yeah. 
Fair enough. All right. So we're into our last and final question. If tomatoes are a fruit, does that mean ketchup is a smoothie? I hope not. I'm sorry. No, I would say no. Ew. I mean, I would never drink that smoothie if it was. I mean, I don't know. I, I feel like if you put a tomato, you know how you, like people put celery in a smoothie or like kale. Like, just because it's a fruit doesn't make it a smoothie. Like, I also feel like, you know, those are vegetables that go in a smoothie. I just think that there's certain fruits and vegetables that should not be in a smoothie, and a tomato is probably one of them. Okay, good point. Good point. I mean, yeah, I, I don't think that I would necessarily drink ketchup, so that would be kind of my point, to be like, it's probably not a smoothie. But, I don't know, maybe there are people that would drink drink a ketchup smoothie, or a tomato smoothie. I, I see the argument both ways, to be honest. I could go, yeah. I could go either way. TBD. I don't know. I feel like a ketchup is a condiment, not a smoothie. Okay. That's fair. It fits in a better category. That's fair. Yeah. I feel yeah. that. I feel that. Is that it? Are you done? <laughs> it's all she wrote. Oh, finished? Okay, okay, well, no, I have a question for you because I watched Katie's uh, podcast earlier today and there was this thing about soup. And yeah. if cereal is a soup, would you say like hot chocolate with marshmallows in it is a soup because it's hot? That's a good point. And if you think about the concept of soup, of it being like cooked and mixed and consumed at a warm temperature, you know what? Yeah, I'm going to say hot chocolate's a soup. (laughs) Would you also say soup has multiple ingredients? Because I would say soup is warm, a warm liquid with multiple ingredients. So I would say no. Marshmallows, you know, the mix. If The mix is part of the broth. Mix plus the milk. (laughs) Oh my God. Mix, it's got multiple ingredients. (laughs) Milk. Milk? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. I'm going to say hot chocolate soup. Nope. Absolutely not. Okay, that's it. Thank you so much for listening to this week's episode of More Than 5%. Um, share it. Send it to someone who you think might like it. Uh, follow us on Instagram at more than 5 pct Number 5 PCT spelled out. Keep investing in women's sports. <laughs> Watch it. Play it. Show it. Cheer for it. it. Love it. Thank you, Claire, for coming on our podcast telling us all about your experience as um, nine-year national team grandma. Uh, We appreciate it so much. And yeah, have a good one. Thanks for having me. Bye.